Hey traders, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we've got a former podcast guest, Dakota, that's going to be going over his trading strategy that he used to pass FTMO. Um, because during my research into kind of the strategies that people have used to pass FTMO, there's not really many out there that actually show their process of trading from traders that have actually passed it. So I reached out to him just to see if he would be open to sharing his strategy that he used and he was he was happy to do that. So I think it's going to be really good for you guys to see this um, and see how he actually, you know, passed the challenge using his own strategy. Um, so big thanks to him for doing this for us. Um, and yeah, let's get into the video. What's going on guys? It's Dakota J. Payne and today I'm going to break down how I passed the FTMO challenge and basically my full strategy about um, on passing the challenge. Um, so first off, I want to thank Jacob and the people at Trade Happy for giving me the opportunity to share this information. I hope everyone that sees this finds it useful and is able to actually capitalize off it and pass the challenge as well. But let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first and foremost, my strategy is really, really easy. Like it's super basic. I don't use any indicators, nothing really special, but I just use basic um, uh, deviation of wave theory and price action, right? So first off, the market tells me which direction wants to go. After that, I'm looking for a pattern to actually tell me uh, which direction I should be looking for the market to go to okay whether that's a reversal pattern or a continuation pattern then ultimately I'm looking for that final push up um, or whichever direction that may be and looking to capitalize off that particular move okay but with that what's really really important are the higher time frames in order for me to find that I need to understand the ultimate direction the market is trying to go so I use top-down analysis and I do, I start on the monthly time frame and I do this whether it's at the beginning of the month or at the beginning of the week, depending on what opportunity I'm looking for on that particular pair. And um, it's nothing special, just finding areas where price makes major rejections, has made uh, major rejections several times. And I go ahead and box price in with those lines. Okay, so now. I know when price comes down to here, I'm looking for buy setups. When price gets up to here, I'm looking for sell opportunities. So uh, really just focusing within this window of price. After I understand that, I go down to my weekly time frame. And on the weekly, continue to box in price, find my trends. Uh, so I'm going to draw a trend line here. I'm actually going to extend it to this one. Oh, so this is my trend line. So with these three lines that I have on my chart, they give me everything that I really need to know about the market or which direction I should look for the market to go to. Uh, first of all, going back to my setup, you can see previously that my setup happened here. The market tell me it wanted to go up. I got a continuation pattern and then price actually pushed up. So one wave, two wave, three waves. Uh, now we're in the first wave again, and we're looking for an opportunity for this to pull back or give me a pattern to tell me which direction the market may go. Now, given the situation, given the area that we're in, this blue line is telling me that price usually comes down from this point. So if I know that, I most likely will see a reversal pattern in this area. And then I would look for price to actually come down, break my trend line, and give me a sell setup coming back down to the bottom there. So that's my analysis of this particular pair. And that's what's running through my mind as I'm working my way down all these time frames. Uh, basically by the time I get to, once I first see that setup, I immediately start running in my head the different scenarios that can potentially take place on this time frame. Okay, so after I got that settled, Handle, I'll go down to my daily time frame, readjust anything that needs to be readjusted. And if there's anything else that I need to add, I add it. But here it looks like I don't need to add anything. 
where we still pretty much see the same exact thing that we saw in the weekly so everything can just stay the same and I'll go down to my four hour time frame now by the time I get to my four hour I usually see a setup okay so this is the last time frame where I'm like okay if I don't see a setup here that I can capitalize off of in the next few days or next or next week I'm gonna scrap this pair and move on to something else okay but here we can actually draw a new uptrend and there's actually an opportunity that we can look at okay and if we look further to the left again you can see other scenarios where my setup has occurred and how it's ultimately gotten to the area that it's at right now now if we focus that price where price is right now we can see that we have that first impulse that first wave and what we're waiting on is for price to give us a pattern to tell us which direction it wants to go okay so after I get that pattern I want to see price come down to a specific area and it's literally just a support and resistance area I look further to the left to see where that could potentially be and I'm gonna base it off of this head and shoulders that was here so I'm gonna scoot it up a little bit to the top of the head and shoulders and that's the area that I'm actually gonna be looking to buy at okay so I'll come back to here now that I know that I'm looking to buy once price gets down to this area in order for price to get down to that area it will have to come down so if I know that what I'm going to, what I'm going to be looking for are sell setups on my one hour and 15 minute time frames okay because ultimately price is gonna to have to sell down in order to get to this setup uh, that I'm waiting for here and then once price and I'm gonna sell all the way until price gets to my zone once it's there that's when I buy and look to buy up to this area okay so that's pretty much the basic rundown of my strategy at least when it comes to the chart now when my actual FTML plan with the parameters and everything um, actually lined up is what I'm gonna talk about next So this, this is my full FTMO plan or base, at least a summary of it for the most part. And how I broke it down was of course had something to do with the parameters that they have. And my first weekly parameters were if I lose 3%, I stop trading. And if I gain 5%, I stop trading. And that's on a weekly basis. And I set those parameters to keep from over trading because it's been my experience as a like when I trade if I have a particular goal set and I don't have certain parameters to stop me from trading once I hit something like once I hit a certain number I will tend to over trade because I get in the mindset of okay I'm on a losing streak I'm losing so I need to place more trades in order to get out of this losing streak or I'm making a lot of profit so I need to place more trades so I can get more profit okay and you start to I start to expose myself to more to more unnecessary risk okay so so those were there to just uh, stop trading because you know you can bounce back from a 3% loss or anything like that um, and to not get over ambitious when you're having a really good week as well uh, next step was basically having a two to one on every single trade that I placed and having a 30 pips SL or less on those setups that were on the one hour and 15 minute. So if we come back here, like I said, I'll go to the lower time frames and look for setups here. Okay. And um, I would always set 30 pip SL or smaller. Now, I would tend to stay away from setting it smaller than 30 pips because I wanted to get my trade plenty of room to breathe because you don't want to choke price you don't want to choke it with your SL um, but even though I know it's tempting especially when you have such a short period of time to reach uh, a certain goal a 10% gain 
but it, it, that just comes into play with discipline. Uh, I was risking half a percent per trade until I reached the 2% target uh, just to give myself a cushion so that I could use a higher risk. And after I reached that 2%, uh, that 2 target, I upped my risk to 1% and I did that the entire time until I hit the percentage goal. And I didn't risk any more than 3% on any at any given time. So that allowed me to know where my focus was. So I don't have to be paying attention to all five of these pairs. I know I'm focusing on maybe this one pair because I have 2% risk here. I have 2% risk here. I don't want to get rid of that 30% risk that I have. Or I have 3% all in one pair. I know, okay, all my focus is on this pair. I don't have to pay attention to anything else. Those other opportunities don't matter because these are all the opportunities I can take at the moment. Okay, and that would hold true until I move my stop loss to break even on a given trade. Because once I move my stop loss to break even, at least on one trade, and I had 3% open risk, I now have 2% open risk. So now that opens me up for another opportunity without taking away the potential profit that I have. Now, ideally, like when I actually trade my main account, my personal account, I don't like to move my break, uh, my stop loss, but I did this to protect my downside so that I didn't go below um, or an extra assistant to help me not go below basically the break even point so I could get a free retry the next month if that were to happen, if I were not to hit the 10% target. But that was basically my plan in a nutshell. Now, my actual experience with FTMO, when I used this, the f it was pretty straightforward. And I didn't run into any complications with this at all. It was, um, I had a 3% gain the first week, and then the first two days of the second week, I had a about a 7.5% gain. Um, and most of that profit was from UChef, and then the other 2 to 4% was from CatJPY. So I first started off trading three pairs in the, on this, on the challenge and end up really only profiting from two. Uh, so it goes to show that you don't really need to pay attention to a ton of pairs to get a significant gain in a short period of time. And definitely, definitely you always want to take your time with this. Like you have a little less than 30 days and the challenge doesn't even start until you take that first trade. So definitely be patient when you go about it. Now, if for some reason you didn't understand my strategy or you didn't understand, completely understand or grasp the FTMO plan that I set forth, I am doing a boot camp starting September 6th. If you guys do want more info on that or even want to sign up, you can go to my website, d4x.co, and there's more information there. Also, if you want to reach out to me or keep up with me in my trading, you can find me on YouTube and Instagram at Dakota J. Payne. And you can also join my Discord channel. Discord channel is called D4X and I'll give him the link so that you guys can get access to that. But really appreciate you guys listening. I hope someone's able to capitalize off of this and uh, pass the challenge as well. Wish you guys luck.